Picture this. A man with a scar on his face, fluent in multiple languages, and armed with a mind that turned the art of deception into a masterpiece. This is the story of Victor Lustig, the man who not only sold the Eiffel Tower once, but managed to pull off the astonishing feat twice. Welcome to another captivating episode of Aggressive Intelligence. Our story opens in the picturesque town of Hostin, Czechoslovakia, where a young Victor Lustig entered the world in 1890. As the winds of destiny began to shape his future, Lustig's early life hinted at the audacious path he was destined to tread. From his formative years, Lustig displayed a natural inclination for risk and chance. His affinity for gambling emerged as a defining trait, foreshadowing the high-stakes games he would later play with unsuspecting victims. But life's journey is rarely smooth, and Lustig's early escapades took an unexpected turn. A flirtatious encounter left him marked, a visible scar etched on his face by a jealous boyfriend of a woman he was flirting with. This early brush with danger only fueled Lustig's appetite for a life on the edge. Little did the world know that this young man's seemingly ordinary beginnings would pave the way for one of the most audacious and captivating tales of deceit in history. As Lustig's story unfolds, we find ourselves with a man who not only thrived on risk, but also possessed a unique set of skills that set him apart, his mastery of languages. Fluent in several tongues, Lustig became a linguistic chameleon, seamlessly adapting to the diverse environments in which he operated. From the bustling ocean liners to the dimly lit back alleys, Lustig's linguistic prowess became a key instrument in his deceptive symphony. It wasn't long before he set his sights on unsuspecting passengers aboard ocean liners, luring them into his intricate schemes. The Broadway production scam, one of Lustig's early exploits, he would target rich travelers posing as a music producer seeking investment in a fake Broadway production. It was the perfect scam. He had a captive audience of marks, and by the time they realized they had been scammed, the cruise was over and Lustig had disappeared. But it wasn't just about language, it was about connection. Lustig had an uncanny knack for making people believe in the fantastical, blurring the lines between reality and fiction. From the Atlantic to the Pacific, Lustig's audacious cons left a trail of broken dreams and bewildered victims. His multilingual mastery served as the key to unlocking the doors of opportunity, allowing him to slip seamlessly between different worlds. Lustig went on to other frauds when these oceanic lines were stopped during World War I. After relocating to the U.S., Lustig's exploits in the world of deception continued to escalate. This time, the stage was set for a bond swindle that would leave financial institutions scratching their heads and the elusive Lustig disappearing into the shadows. Armed with charm and an air of sophistication, Lustig walked into a bank, a place traditionally associated with trust and security. Little did they know the man before them was a maestro of deceit. In a move that would make even the most seasoned swindlers raise an eyebrow, Lustig managed to convince the bank to finance a portion of bonds for a repossessed property. But this was no ordinary transaction. It was a masterclass in sleight of hand and audacity. As the unsuspecting bank officials believed they were securing their investment, Lustig deftly escaped with both the money and the bonds, leaving nothing but empty vaults and perplexed authorities in his wake. The Broadway bond swindle was a testament to Lustig's ability to manipulate not only individuals, but entire institutions. His criminal repertoire was expanding, and the world was about to witness the emergence of a con artist whose audacity knew no bounds. In his quest for ever grander deceptions, he unveiled a device that would captivate the imagination of both his victims and the underworld, the infamous currency duplicating machine. Picture this, a small, unassuming box that Lustig claimed could duplicate any currency bill inserted into it. The catch? There is a seemingly reasonable six-hour waiting period for the machine to work its mystical replication process. He would set up a scenario using the magic money machine, so that the mark would come across his device and be curious to know how it operated. Victor will eventually give in to pressure and request to borrow a high dollar bill from his eager target. After inserting the money into a small hole on one side of the box and turning a crank to draw the note into the apparatus, Lustig pulled a lever and looked at his watch. He informed them that the procedure would take six hours, during which Lustig would join them during the wait time while his magical box worked and the mark would almost always gladly agree to spend that time at dinner or playing cards instead of waiting in Lustig's hotel room. That's correct. 
They didn't even watch the package or make sure nobody else came in and tampered with it. When Victor and his mark got back, they would discover two flawless thousand-dollar notes when they opened the drawer of the box, which had been observed to be empty. Lustig took the mark for dinner, dealt some cards, and bided his time until the inevitable question of, how much for the box? Naturally, that price was incredibly high, especially because there were a couple of thousand-dollar bills hidden inside, which ensured the new owner could apparently repeat the procedure once Lustig took his money and left. The six-hour delay was a stroke of genius. Not only did it add an air of authenticity to Victor's story, but it also meant he had at least 24 hours to get out of town before his mark was left with an empty, worthless wooden box. The machine could only duplicate one bill at a time, so after ejecting the bills Lustig had preloaded in the machine, the ruse would soon be obvious. The brilliance of this scam lay not just in the machine's mystical allure, but in Lustig's ability to convince his marks that they had stumbled upon an otherworldly creation. The promise of unlimited wealth was too tempting for some to resist. As the machine's supposed capabilities fueled the imaginations of his victims, Lustig's pockets grew heavier with ill-gotten gains. The intricacies of this elaborate con reveal not only the mind of a master manipulator, but also the willingness of individuals to believe in the unbelievable. As Lustig's notoriety spread, so did the audacity of his cons. One of his most daring exploits involved none other than the notorious gangster, Al Capone. In what can only be described as a high-stakes game of manipulation, Lustig set his sights on the kingpin of the Chicago underworld. The Capone con was a strategic dance on the precipice of danger. Lustig proposed a crooked scheme to Capone, asking him to invest $50,000 in his next con. The twist? Lustig never intended to carry out the plan, ensuring that the amount was safely stashed away in a secure deposit box for two months. When the time came to return the money, Lustig spun a tale of failure, claiming the deal had collapsed. Astonishingly, Capone got the impression that he was dealing with an honest man. Seizing the opportunity, Lustig convinced Capone that the failed deal left him penniless. The result? Capone willingly handed over $5,000, showcasing Lustig's unparalleled skill in manipulating even the most formidable figures. Despite his success in the world of cons, Lustig's personal life was marked by turbulence. Married, yet lured away by the promises of another, he left a trail of broken hearts and shattered trust. As he chased the next big score, relationships crumbled, and those who once stood by him found themselves abandoned. Lustig's romantic entanglements mirrored the complexities of his cons revealing a man whose hunger for more extended beyond the world of scams and schemes. The 1920s brought a new opportunity for Lustig I that would immortalize his name in the annals of criminal history. The iconic Eiffel Tower, a symbol of Parisian grandeur, was in need of repair. Lustig, ever the opportunist, saw this as the stage for his most audacious act yet. Built for the 1889 Paris Exposition, the tower was intended to stand for only 20 years, when Lustig showed up in the City of Light, it was 36 years old and a rusting eyesore. Incredible as it sounds now, many Parisians wanted it gone. The Eiffel Tower con began with Lustig's ingenious plan to exploit the dire state of the iconic landmark. But this time, he wasn't just targeting individuals. He set his sights on the largest scrap metal dealers in France, convincing these dealers that the French government intended to auction the Eiffel Tower for scrap. Lustig orchestrated a bidding war that would ultimately result in an unsuspecting victim winning the dubious prize. Lustig had official-looking stationery printed identifying him as deputy director of the Ministre de Poste et Telegraphes. He sent letters to six leading scrap metal dealers, inviting them to a hush-hush meeting to discuss removing the landmark. Absolute secrecy was critical, he insisted, to avoid a public uproar. He got a suite in the elegant Hotel de Crillon and met the dealers there. Then they all went by limo on an inspection tour of the tower. Back at the hotel, he invited them to submit sealed bids the next day. One dealer was especially eager to win the contract. André Poisson asked for a private meeting with Lustig. He explained he was new to Paris and didn't have the insider connections the other dealers had. Lustig said he understood. He also lamented that as a government bureaucrat, he was having trouble making ends meet. Wink, wink. Poisson took the hint. He paid the equivalent of $20,000 to purchase the tower, 
and an additional $50,000 to guarantee his bid would win. Lustig was on a train speeding to Vienna within an hour with $70,000 in cash, worth $1.1 million today. Incidentally, when Poisson realized he'd been conned, he was too humiliated to call the cops. But Lustig's con didn't end there. Expecting the victim to report the crime, he was surprised when silence prevailed. The Eiffel Tower con was a masterpiece of deception, showcasing Lustig's ability to manipulate not just individuals, but entire industries. Seeing an opportunity to double down on his audacious scheme, Lustig decided to repeat the process. He orchestrated another round of bidding, engaging a new set of scrap metal dealers, and once again duped the highest bidder out of his money. Unfortunately for Lustig, one of his other marks had grown suspicious and reported his scam to the police. Lustig was forced to flee to the U.S. to evade arrest. Lustig, believing he had outsmarted both the initial victim and potential law enforcement, reveled in the success of his double cross. However, little did he know that the threads of deception were slowly unraveling. Fate was quietly preparing its own script, and the time for the unraveling of his intricate schemes drew near. Lustig's audacious exploits had not gone unnoticed, and law enforcement agencies were closing in. The man who had danced on the edges of deception was about to face the harsh reality of justice. With an arsenal of passports and identities, Lustig had successfully eluded capture for years. However, his luck was about to run out, and the carefully constructed facade was about to crumble. In a dramatic turn of events, the authorities finally caught up with Lustig. The multilingual mastermind, who had once effortlessly charmed his way through life, now found himself facing the consequences of his relentless pursuit of ill-gotten gains. The charges brought against Lustig painted a vivid picture of a man who had not only deceived individuals, but had also manipulated entire financial institutions. The Broadway bond swindle and the currency duplicating machine scam were just the tip of the iceberg. The trial that followed exposed the intricacies of Lustig's criminal empire. The prosecution meticulously presented evidence of his various scams, leaving no room for doubt about the extent of his deceit. Despite his best efforts to maintain a facade of innocence, Lustig was found guilty on multiple charges. The man who had once convinced others to invest in illusions now faced a very real and undeniable truth, the consequences of his actions. The gavel fell and the sentence was pronounced. Victor Lustig, the maestro of deception, was destined for 20 years behind bars. As the days turned into months and months into years, Lustig's health deteriorated. The once flamboyant and charismatic trickster was reduced to a mere shadow of his former self. In a poetic twist of fate, the man who had manipulated others with finesse found himself powerless against the inexorable march of time and the consequences of his choices. Victor Lustig's journey came to a close within the confines of prison walls. The man who had sold dreams, illusions, and even the Eiffel Tower. And there you have it, the unbelievable story of Victor Lustig, the man who sold the Eiffel Tower twice. As we navigate through the twists and turns of his life, we are reminded that truth is indeed stranger than fiction. If you enjoyed this journey through history, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more fascinating stories.